We now look in more detail at cyclotomic polynomials. These are the minimum polynomials of the primitive nth roots of unity. Let's recall what we know so far. Previously, we observed that when p is prime, we have the factorization x to the p minus 1 equals x minus 1 times this polynomial here. And using Eisenstein's criteria, we could show that phi p of x is irreducible. This tells us that phi p of x is the minimum polynomial of each and every primitive p root of unity. We now want to look at the case where p is not prime. Let's, look at, let's start by looking at a couple of examples. x to the fourth minus 1, we know is x minus 1, x plus 1, x squared plus 1. And this is the factorization into irreducibles of this polynomial. Similarly, x to the sixth minus 1, we can factor as x cubed minus 1 times x cubed plus 1, and we get this factorization. Let's look at these factorizations. What in fact is happening? Well, x squared plus 1 has roots plus or minus i, and these are the primitive fourth roots of unity. So this is the minimum polynomial of the primitive fourth roots of unity. And from this point of view, we can think of x plus 1 as the minimum polynomial of the primitive second root of unity, because that's minus 1. When we move on to x to the sixth minus 1, we can identify again x squared plus x plus 1 as being the minimum polynomial of the primitive third root of, roots of unity. With a little bit more work, we can show that x squared minus x plus 1 is the minimum polynomial of the two primitive sixth roots of unity. So what we're seeing is that x to the n minus 1 in these two cases factors as the product of the minimum polynomials of the primitive dth roots of unity where d divides n. And this, as we'll see, is a general theorem. Let's quickly uh, review some basic facts about roots of unity in a general algebraic situation. Let's let f be a field of characteristic 0 and e a splitting field for x to the n minus 1. The set of roots is easily seen to be a finite multiplicative subgroup of E star. So by an earlier result, it's cyclic. Using the formal derivative uh, applied to x to the n minus 1, we see the derivative is n times x to the n minus 1, which is relatively prime. So there are no repeated roots. So R has n elements, and R is isomorphic to the cyclic group Cn. The primitive nth roots of unity are then defined to be the generators of this group, the elements of order n. Notice that if zeta is any such generator, then the other ones will be of the form zeta to the i, where i is between 0 and n and is relatively prime to n. The number of such integers is usually denoted phi of n, and this is the Euler Totian function. More generally, notice that the order of zeta to the i by elementary group theory is n divided by the GCD of n and i. So since r is the union, the disjoint union of all the primitive dth roots of unity for d dividing n, and since the number of primitive dth roots of unity is phi to the d, then n is the sum over d dividing n of phi to the d. A phi of d. So let's now define the cyclotomic polynomials, and for this we return to the case where we're working over the rationals q. So let e be a splitting field for x to the n minus 1 over q, and e obviously is generated over q by zeta for some or any primitive nth root of unity. Okay, the nth cyclotomic polynomial is defined to be the polynomial phi n of x, which is the product over zeta of x minus zeta, where zeta is a primitive nth root of unity. Then since x to the n minus 1 is the product of x minus zeta over all the nth roots of unity, and this set 
decomposes as the disjoint union of all the d roots of un primitive d roots of unity for d dividing n, we must have that x to the n minus 1 is the product of these phi d x. What we want to show is that these phi d of x are actually rational polynomials. In fact, they have integer coefficients and that they are irreducible as po rational polynomials. One result that we'll need a lot is uh, a consequence of Gauss's lemma that if f of x is a monic integer polynomial and if it factors as a product of elements over q of x, and these are all monic polynomials, then by Gauss's lemma, all of these factors, gi of x, are also integer polynomials. So let's look at our main theorem. And the theorem states that, first of all, as I said, the cyclotomic polynomials phi n of x actually lie in z of x. They have integer coefficients. And they are irreducible as elements of q of x. So this tells us that this decomposition that we just wrote down is actually the prime factorization over q of x to the n minus 1. To prove this, we use induction on n. Uh, the base case n equals 1 is extremely trivial. It just says that x minus 1 is equal to x minus 1. So let's move to the general case and let's assume the result is true for all d dividing n and d less than n. So in particular, in this case, phi d of x is irreducible with integer coefficients. Uh, let's let j prime be the set of nth roots of unity that are not primitive and set c of x to be the product of x minus xi, where xi is in j prime. Then this is clearly the product of all the phi d of x where d is less than n and d divides n. And x to the n minus 1 will be c of x times phi n of x, because x to the n minus 1 is the product of x minus xi, where xi is any root, nth root of unity. So since we have this factorization, that implies that phi n of x is a rational polynomial, and then, as I said, Gauss's lemma implies that it's actually an integer polynomial. So it remains to show that phi n of x is irreducible. This is a little harder. Let Jn be the set of primitive nth roots of unity. What we want to show is that all the elements of Jn have the same minimum polynomial. So first, let's let P be a prime relatively prime to n, so not a divisor of n. Let's let zeta be in Jn, so zeta to the P, as I noticed before, since P is relatively prime to n, zeta pi zeta to the p is also in jn. It's also a primitive nth root of unity. Let m of x be the minimum polynomial of zeta to the p. Then if we let k of x be m of x to the p, then k of zeta is equal to m of zeta to the p, so it's equal to zero. So zeta is a root of k. This, of course, implies that k of x is a multiple of the minimum polynomial of zeta. So k of x is m zeta x times q of x for some rational polynomial q of x. Uh, by Gauss's lemma, m of x, uh, since it's a... Uh, rational polynomial dividing x to the n minus 1, it has to have integer coefficients. So similarly, k of x, since that's just m of x to the p, also has integer coefficients. Okay, so this means that we can now apply the homomorphism from z of x to z p of x. In other words, we can reduce all the coefficients 
in this equation here, modulo p. And we'll denote the corresponding polynomials by bars. Note also that because f plus g to the p is equal to f to the p plus g to the p, because we're in characteristic p now, we have that m bar m bar of x to the p is the same as m bar of x to the p. So k bar of x, which is m bar of x to the p, is equal to m bar of x to the p. And m bar of zeta, or m zeta bar of x, divides this. So any irreducible factor of m bar zeta is an irreducible factor of m bar to the p. So it has to be an irreducible factor of m bar. So m bar zeta, m zeta bar and m bar have at least one common irreducible factor. So suppose that m of x is not the same as m zeta of x. Suppose these minimum polynomials are distinct. Since they're irreducible, that means they're relatively prime. Since they are relatively prime and they both divide x to the n minus 1, their product divides x to the n minus 1. But then applying the homomorphism into zp of x tells us that this product m bar of x times m zeta bar divides x to the n minus 1 bar in zp of x. But now let's apply um, the formal derivative again. We see that uh, when we differentiate x to the n minus 1, we get n bar x to the n minus 1. And n bar is not 0 because we chose p so that it doesn't divide n. So x to the n minus 1 and its derivative are relatively prime. So again, x to the n cannot have multiple roots. But of course, this contradicts the assumption that uh, these two elements have a common irreducible factor. Because we have the product here dividing x to the n minus 1. So this cannot happen. So this contradicts this assumption here that m is not equal to m, prime, uh, m zeta. So what have we shown? We've shown that if zeta is a primitive nth root of unity and p is a prime that doesn't divide n, that zeta and zeta to the p have the same minimum polynomial. Now, by successively raising zeta to different prime powers, we can continue this process to conclude uh, that for any zeta to the i, where i is relatively prime to n, that zeta and zeta to the i have the same minimum polynomial. In other words, we can extend the previous result to conclude that all the primitive nth roots of unity have the same minimum polynomial. What does this say? Well, it says that the minimum polynomial of zeta has to have at least the number of roots uh, it says that m, m zeta, sorry, it says that all the primitive nth roots of unity are roots of m zeta. So this number, which is equal to the order of j to the n, j to the n, remember, was the set of primitive nth roots of unity. So the degree of this polynomial is bigger than jn, which is the degree of phi n x. But we know also that all the primitive nth roots of unity are all roots of phi n. And phi n has smaller degree than this thing, which is the minimum polynomial. So they have to coincide since they're both monic. So phi n of x is the minimum polynomial of zeta, where zeta is any primitive root of unity. So in particular, this says that phi n of x is irreducible.
So this completes the proof. We've shown that phi n of x is an integer polynomial, and we've shown that it's irreducible as a rational polynomial. And this gives us the factorization of x to the n minus 1 as the product of these phi d of x, where d divides n. Let's have a look at some examples just to finish it off. Uh, the first ones we know well for x squared, x cubed minus 1. We already talked about x to the fourth minus 1, x to the fifth minus 1. Again, 5 is prime. It looks like that. x to the sixth minus 1 looks like this. x to the seventh looks like that with an x there. So the next challenge is to factor x to the 8 minus 1, x to the 9 minus 1, x to the 10 minus 1, and I'll leave that as an exercise for the reader.